Hello, my name is Tony Ruddle and I am the moderator of the NBA since December 2019. It has been a challenging time because alongside the Covid lockdown we have been seeking a new regional minister for when John Claydon retires. Constantly we have been asking ourselves what is God saying to us? What does God want from us? And a Bible passage that offered an immediate challenge was from Isaiah 43 verses 18 and 19 which in the NIV reads Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing, now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way. It seemed to me that this puts the stress on the Lord doing something already. However, in the Passion Translation, the emphasis shifts slightly to the expectation of God's way opening up before our very eyes. Stop dwelling on the past. Don't even remember these former things. I am doing something brand new, something unheard of. Even now it sprouts and grows and matures. Don't you perceive it? I will make a way. And I find it revealing that God shares this in the context of the past. For as I said just a few verses before, the God who builds a road right through the ocean, who carves a path through pounding waves, that is, the God who changes situations, who saves his people, who allows no obstacle to stand in their way so that they become a witness to his glory and power. And this is the turning point, the moment of change. God is expecting us also to be alert, ready for his future. He is priming us, the NBA, for the new way. But will we be willing? Will you and I be prepared? So in listening to these verses, the thinking around them strangely led me to the upper room, perhaps because Easter is still my remembering. On the Thursday evening, Jesus' plans were to prepare a table for his disciples, a last meal with him. But as Caroline pointed out in a video a few weeks ago, Jesus has a new menu. This Passover for his disciples will not simply follow the pattern they accept and expect. Everything the Lord does is in the context of something new, something radically different. As they enter the room and ignore their dirty feet, Jesus is astonishing them as he disrobes, literally taking off his position as host, lord and leader, where he should be served, and humbly sits at their feet as a servant and washes them. In that moment he reveals his mission to make anyone who follows him clean. And that first new truth is followed by an even greater shock as he talks of the bread and wine on the table prophetically, as not looking back but forwards to a sacrificial reality, a very different road than they had anticipated. Through his brokenness will come opportunity of new life. The apparent ending they see is not the end, but a new beginning. Four days later, they are again in that upper room, fearful and accepting that all is finished. Jesus comes afresh in resurrection power and authority. He bears the past signs of brokenness, but shares his way, his commission with them. As the Father sent me, I send you. To enable the new, he breathes on them the Holy Spirit. He encourages them to leave the past behind by moving forward in his peace and power. Sharing Christ's table is not simply remembering, though he calls us to do that. It is about understanding the basis of our mission in new ways every time we meet and celebrate his supper, by going forward with the good news of forgiveness and healing in the way he desires his mission for today. A few weeks ago I was caught up afresh in the wonder of the love of Jesus in making me, us, fishes of men, and a phrase popped into my mind which I share with you now as motivation for the future. For the gift of being caught and becoming a catcher, I thank you Lord.
so as an association let us grasp the new enthusiastically and perceive how the past is superseded by the new way. Pray for it, listen for yourself and then do all he requires of you.